Wow, what a weekend. Two great American events held in the same part of the country. Talking, of course, about the Masters Golf Tournament on the one hand, where every day you got 40,000 mostly white people going into this country club, Augusta National. You got, you know, you got to go in for seven days of, of practice rounds, real rounds. Uh, the, the watchword is civility. There's no drama. There's no fighting. There's no shooting. There's no drug dealing. There's no car chases. Nobody's dying. Uh, I mean, the worst thing that could happen in Augusta National is if you take your chair and you put your chair down where you want to sit in the daytime and somebody comes along and nudges your chair an inch to the right, you have just violated one of the most hallowed traditions of Augusta. Nobody's ever been shot or killed for it. On the other hand, we have Black Beach Week. Now this now it's now it's kind of focused on Biloxi. But it's you know it's been all over the country really, Black Beach Week. I mean they used to call it Greek Fest, they used to call it Freak Nick, and it's kind of gone from town to town to town to town. Up it was in the East Coast for a while, then it went to Atlanta for a while, they kicked it out of Atlanta, and it kind of moves here to there, here to there. Finally, it's kind of settled in Biloxi. Well, let's uh, end. Uh, I think we're, we've had quite a bit of a different result in Biloxi than we did at Augusta over the weekend. Why don't we, why don't we hear from the local folks about get the antiseptic version of what this thing is supposed to be all about. From Biloxi Black Beach Weekend, and promoters Maurice Bryan and Darian Burns are going over plans with Coliseum director Matt McDonald. The event, April 7th through the 9th, kicks off Friday night in the convention center. On Saturday, April 8th, the scene will shift to the grounds of the Coliseum with a car show, vendors, and live entertainment. Promoters have turned to social media to get the word out, and a large crowd, perhaps as many as 20,000 people, are expected from near and far. Crowds are coming from all over. It used to be a you know a southern thing, and now man, we got people coming from New York. They're coming from all over. Um, the event is spreading. Word of mouth is great. Our social media is excellent, so we're getting the word out. Down is on for the 2017 edition of Biloxi Black Beach Weekend. The three-day event will draw thousands to the coast. This year, promoters are working to have more organized activities and a centralized parking location. This in an effort to reduce traffic problems. Hey, that sounds pretty harmless, right? To some of the fellas getting together, having a little bit of fun. But by Sunday night, Black Beach Week in Biloxi had worn out its welcome with police and with the locals. We had a huge increase in spring break turnout. There were lots and lots of complaints. Uh, lots of criminal activity. Why don't we just blow through some of this, uh, some of what really happened at, uh, at, at the Black Beach, uh, Black Beach Week in Biloxi. Then maybe we'll get into a little bit more of the criminal activity. Much to the dismay of some of our spring breakers, uh, yesterday we interdicted some party supplies destined uh, to Gulfport. Our uh, highway interdiction unit intercepted over 100 pounds of marijuana. We conducted an investigation yesterday and uh, uh, it was destined for Gulfport for the purposes of being sold during spring break. Uh, when you talk over 100 pounds of marijuana, you're talking about a street value of about $200,000. Uh, while we're excited about spring break, uh, we've got gorgeous weather and we're expecting a good weekend. It's this kind of stuff that really puts a negative impact on what should be a really good event. And uh, uh, certainly we don't believe it. It reflects everybody involved in spring break but that is a lot of marijuana for one week. Hard to say how many people were at Black Beach Week in Biloxi, but let's just say 20,000, you have 100 pounds of pot. I think that comes out to about one pound per 200 people. Uh, I don't know. Is that enough? I don't even know if that's enough. Maybe that's not enough. Maybe that's too much. I don't know. But when they weren't smoking pot, people were having gunfights on the streets in cars. What else were they up to? Uh, Lots of uh, lots of other RG bargy going on down there. Um, here we go. We got a big old police chase, all related to the Black Beach Week. We got drug deal gone bad. Uh, translation: 
One drug dealer tried to rob a customer. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you check online, you can see Biloxi is now becoming famous for its Black Beach Week. It's gone big time. And it's rated the 20th trashiest spring break destination in the United States of America. When they summed it up, the cops in Biloxi said it was probably one of the more troublesome spring breaks we've had in quite a few years, said a police spokesman. There were quite a few more people, quite a few more incidents, and several criminal complaints. But you know, Biloxi was not the only place where you have Black Beach weekend. It kind of spread out all over the Gulf, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, that is. And uh, right down the road in, let me see, what's it called? Uh, South Walton Beach, Seacrest Village. Um, they had they started celebrating their Black Beach uh, week about a week ago. And, uh, well, they ran into a lot of trouble. Parts of 30A seem like they've been taken over by hundreds of teenagers. Some say they're wreaking havoc on several communities. As News Channel 7's Danielle Ellis tells us, residents and business owners are trying to find ways to keep them under control. 30A has traditionally been a family spring break destination, bringing kids of all ages. But one age group seems to be causing some issues in some of the smaller communities. It really started last year. We saw big groups of teenagers. The mobs of kids are just gathering. It's a little unruly for the business owners, and uh, unfortunately the police have to get involved. You know, there'd be hundreds of them. Last year we saw a group of about a thousand out on the beach just wandering from one place to another, and that's continued on to this year. This week, Seacrest Beach, Rosemary Beach, and the villages of South Walton have enacted an emergency curfew, hoping to disperse the large groups of young people. Although it's only for a couple more days, residents and business owners say that this emergency curfew is necessary. I think the emergency curfew is a great thing. It's bad for business, but it's only here another day, and it's just to keep everyone safe. Uh, when you have so many people down at one time, it just helps you feel like perhaps there's some control. Um, we have seen some um, or heard some vandalism with stolen bikes happening at night and that kind of thing. Um, but I'd say those, those are the biggest problems. You know, we just can't have four or five, six hundred kids walking the streets and the police are working overtime. But many of the visiting teens are not thrilled about the new rule. Well, I think it's really dumb because we all paid to be here and they're making us leave. And we're all here to go on the beach and they're making us leave the beach. And it's just really annoying. Uh, I think it's too early and that they're ruining everyone's spring break. Well, I've already heard of there's some kids, a lot of kids from our school that are down here at the moment. And I know that some of them have already gotten in trouble with police, actually, because they have been out late on the beach. I hope everyone comes back. Just be kind, be courteous, enjoy yourselves. We live at the most, the best place in the world down here on 30A. Reporting from 30A, Danielle Ellis, News Channel 7. Seaside put a similar curfew in place at the beginning of spring break and say they are pleased with the outcome. But this little enclave down there on 30A near the Gulf of Mexico. They're, they've been kind of keeping a lid on what's going on down there with the videos and things like that. But lots of residents and even a cop sent me messages saying, hey, look, this is we've gotten large scale black mob violence in our town that's ruining spring break. It's black beach, uh, black break. It's black sp spring break week. Uh, let me see. I think a, one of the cops spokespeople down there said, uh, we had to put the curfew on because of the underage drinking, large fights, unruly teens, belligerent teen with police. This week has been a nightmare. A few days ago, a bunch of black people surrounded a cop car and tried to tip it over. Uh, welcome to our world, Seacrest Village. One woman in Biloxi, of course, Twitter's kind of ablaze with this. One woman on uh, Twitter goes, Black spring break breakers destroy Biloxi, Mississippi Beach once again. Explain to me one more time we why we have black spring break. And in reply, a young lady said, Oh, wow, these white folks are really pressed about black spring break. That is sad. Well, oh, that's not a young lady. That's a dude. Ah, dude looks like a lady. Ah. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly did a segment on this, I think it was two years ago, and they were talking about 
this tradition of Black Beach Week down on the Gulf, and O'Reilly kind of poo-pooed it just as a bunch of kids blowing off some steam. But curious enough, it was Juan Williams who came in and reminded Riley of this tradition of black violence, black criminality, black mayhem uh, uh, during Black Spring Break Week uh, this time of the year. So sometimes, you know, nobody wants to connect the dots, but sometimes the dots just start connecting themselves. That's what we're seeing at Black Beach Week. And so when we compare it, of course, to the Masters, or it could have been NASCAR, could have been the Indy 500, it could have been any country Western concert, we see this enormous difference between how white people are behaving and how black people are behaving. But every day we open up a newspaper and we see that black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere. That explains everything, including why black people are going crazy down in Biloxi, Mississippi this weekend. I mean, I'm, I'm not clear on the mechanism. What is it about this white racism that makes black people engage in criminal behavior wildly out of proportion? I mean, okay, I understand. You say there's a bunch of racism over here, say. But how does that racism like seep into your life to make you like have gun have gun battles in Biloxi or smuggle 100 pounds of pot into Biloxi or do things that terrorize the, 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 the white kids in uh, Seacrest Village so much so they have to put an 8 p.m. curfew. Oh, by the way, despite all the pictures of all the white kids in that little village, they didn't put the curfew on for the white kids. That is a black thing there. They put the curfew on for the black kids. Even if it was going to make them angry. <laughs>